Good morning, YouTubers. You have reached the Brian Sledge channel. Please like, subscribe, and hit the bell for notifications. Uh, thank you very much, and have a great day. Bye. All right, the Democratic Socialist running for Congress right here in New York goes on the attack against Israel, calling our ally a, quote, occupation force over Palestine. Listen. I also think that what people are starting to see, at least in, in the occupation uh, of, of Palestine, is um, just an increasing crisis of humanitarian condition. You use the term the occupation of Palestine. Um, I think it, what I meant is like the, the settlements, places where, um, where Palestinians are experiencing uh, difficulty. Do you think you can expand on that? I am not the expert on geopolitics on this issue. Well, that is clear. Here to react, Michael Knowles, host of The Michael Knowles Show. Michael, good to have you with us. Abby, good to be here. All right. You listen to the DNC, and that is the future of their party. <laughs> That is the future of their party. I think she's a good representative. The Democrats at this point are proudly ignorant and thoroughly anti-Israel, so it makes sense. This poor girl, Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez, is not making a great first impression, and that is the lasting one. What do we know about her since her campaign hit the national stage? She is a liar. She lied about her upbringing. She pretended to be... Uh, from a poor part of the Bronx and grow up there. In reality, she grew up in a ritzy part of one of the ritziest counties in the country. I know this because I grew up in the town over from her. So we know that, and now we know that she is proudly ignorant. She has this great line, she says, uh, I, you know, I don't really know a lot about this, but I firmly believe, you know, frequently wrong, but never in doubt. She, she mm -hmm. uses the slogans that we've seen from Democrats now for the past 20 years. You know, we heard in the Bush era, Bush lied, people died. He didn't. We heard no, more, no war for oil. There wasn't one. Now we hear Trump colluded with Russia. There's no evidence of that. And the uh, myth of Israeli occupied Palestine, which I believe is the country east of Narnia and west of Wakanda, is another example of that. You know, Margaret Hoover in that television program scratched mm. just below the surface and Ocasio-Cortez had no answer. She didn't know anything. All she had learned was ideology. I think apparently Yorktown High School is not as good as we all thought it was. So by She's the way, just Michael, learned these to your point, she went to Boston University. She says she doesn't know geopolitics in that interview. She majored in international relations. So obviously this is something that she claims to know a lot about. Kudos to Margaret Hoover in that interview for simply listening and following up with, can you please expand on this? What, what I'm surprised by is she's done so many interviews since this big win a few weeks ago, and yet none of this has been exposed. What does this tell you about bigger picture of the Democratic Party? Well, first of all, it tells you that the media are carrying water for them. Margaret Hoover has a very sort of stable, sober public affairs show. She's not exactly out to get her guests, but the guests expose themselves. If Ocasio-Cortez were smart, she would have locked herself in a closet until November. The election is hers, and all she's doing is hurting herself. And more broadly, what this tells us is there's a real problem with millennial education. You know, I'm the same age as Ocasio-Cortez. I went mm. to a school nearby in high school, and one aspect of that is in high schools, especially in New York in those days, the curricula told you, don't worry about studying facts. Don't learn names and dates and details. Just learn broader picture trends. And I think that's the ideological component that allows a committed socialist like Miss Ocasio-Cortez to spew ignorance without knowing the basis of the things she's talking about. Yeah, well, this was certainly, I'm sure, a wake-up call. She's in the hot seat now, so you can bet a lot of other questions will be coming her way. Michael Knowles, always good to have you with us very early there in Los Angeles. Good to see you, Abby. You too. All right. Uh, meanwhile, let's talk a little bit about this. It was a couple of weeks ago here in uh, the New York City area that a political newcomer, 28-year-old uh, uh, self-described socialist, Alexandria Cortez, uh, ran for Congress and beat somebody who had been in Congress for four term or longer than that actually uh, and so many people since she won have wanted to invite her on the shows or go speak to her groups and they've had they them on more too. about her she's been everywhere but she hasn't been questioned uh, in any type of substantive way until yesterday where you had um, Margaret Hoover sit down on her PBS show and ask Alexandra Ocasio-Cortez about her comments about occupied Palestine making Israel the bad guy. Let's see how she handles it.
I also think that what people are starting to see, at least in, in the occupation uh, of, of Palestine, is um, just an increasing crisis of humanitarian condition. You use the term the occupation of Palestine. Um, I think it, what I meant is like the, the settlements, places where, um, where Palestinians are experiencing uh, Difficulty. Do you think you can expand on that? I am not the expert on geopolitics on this issue. Well, she says she's not an expert, but she did study and major in international relations at Boston University. Good for Margaret for sensing something was up there and pushing back a little more to expand on that answer. As we said, she's 28 years old. She's done, made the rounds of interviews. I'm surprised that people haven't dug a little bit deeper to get more substance from her on some big issues of the day. Um, I spoke to Michael Knowles yep. earlier on the show, who's a millennial himself. He's the same age as this woman. And he had this to say about it. The Democrats at this point are proudly ignorant and thoroughly anti-Israel, so it makes sense. This poor girl, Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez, is not making a great first impression, and that is the lasting one. She has this great line, she says, uh, I, you know, I don't really know a lot about this, but I firmly believe, you know, frequently wrong but never in doubt. If Ocasio-Cortez were smart, she would have locked herself in a closet until November. The election is hers, and all she's doing is hurting herself. But she should have then locked herself in the closet about 800 TV appearances before because she has been wall-to-wall -wall on a lot of channels talking about her views. And, you know, here in the New York City area, she is red hot right yeah. now. Right. right. Everybody wants her to come on their show, uh, come talk to their groups because they want to hear her point of view. But her point of view is socialism. And we're in a capitalist country with an economy that's on a roll and booming. And she says, well, that's because people got jobs because they need two jobs and we're all hungry. So that's interesting. So Venezuela is a great model for her. Yep. France is a great model for her. I have a feeling uh, Sweden. she's going to be talking to a number of experts in the days to come, maybe pulling out some history books. Well, let's see what she does next. All right. Young Democratic Socialist Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez is sparking outrage for attacking Israel. The New York congressional candidate struggling to defend her comments, calling them, quote, occupiers of Palestine. You use the term the occupation of Palestine. Um, I think it, what I meant is like the, the settlements, places where, um, where Palestinians are experiencing uh, difficulty. Do you think you can expand on that? I am not the expert on geopolitics on this issue. So earlier we asked you, is this a sign the left should back off their glowing endorsement? And most of you seem to feel the same way. Andrea on Twitter says the left loves her. She trusts Israel, but so has John Kerry and many other leaders in the Democratic Party. They don't support Israel and haven't for a long time. End quote. If you were on Instagram says it's a sign she has no clue what she's talking about. And Mike on Facebook says just showing her uninformed ignorance. Pull up that uh, Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez. This is just, this is incredible. Uh, the Democrat nominee in the New York Congressional District now, who beat uh, Democrat the Congressman Joe Crowley, who was in line for a leadership position, by the way. You know her name, Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez. You know, claims to be a socialist, doesn't really know what socialism is when you talk to her about it. Well, she decided she was going to opine on foreign policy issues, notably Israel and Israel's control of the West Bank. Listen to this outrageous comment she makes and listen to her try to defend how little she knows about it and then admit she knows nothing about it at the end. I am, of course, the, the dynamic there in terms of geopolitics of and the course. war in the Middle East is very different than people expressing their First Amendment right to protest. Well, yes, but I also think that what people are starting to see, at least in, in the occupation uh, of, of Palestine, is um, just an, an increasing crisis of humanitarian condition. And that, to me, is just where I tend to mm -hmm. come from on this issue. You use the term the occupation of Palestine. Mm. What did oh. you mean by that? Oh, um, I think it, what I meant is like the, the settlements that are increasing in, in some of these areas and, and places where, um, where Palestinians are experiencing uh, difficulty in access to uh, their housing and homes. Do you think you can expand on that? Yeah, I mean, I think I'd also just, I, I am not the expert on geopolitics on this issue, you know.
She's not the expert on, on tax policy, economics, healthcare policy, education policy, Laffer curves, Keynesian economics, Austrian school economics, Chicago school economics, just about anything else either. But she is going to be in Congress and the Democrats love her. So that's great. Remember, the Democrats right now are a party of emotion only. Outrage campaigns against Trump, devoid of what's actually happening on the ground, and Trump's substantive action is against the Russians. Focus strictly on the outrage and the emotion. On the actual substance side, however, for your own candidates, ignore the substance completely. That's you, you, those are Cortez's words, or Ocasio Cortez's own words, not mine. She has no idea what she's talking about, yet she opines on the issue of the Israeli occupation. How you can occupy your own territory, I'm unaware. By the way, there is no Palestine, okay? There's no Palestine. She's just making that up. But again, she said to herself she doesn't know what she's talking about.